Welcome to Data Center Energy Efficiency Opportunities, brought to you by US EPA's Energy Star Program. This presentation is subtitled, What Managers Should Know, because it is intended for a broad, non-technical audience. So if you're a sustainability manager, a facilities manager, a finance manager, or even an IT manager who's never really thought about energy efficiency opportunities, you're in the right place. Today you will hear from two technical support contractors for the EPA Energy Star program. Myself, Bob Wong of the Cadmus Group, and Mike Walker of Beacon Consultants Network. This presentation is divided into five more easily digestible parts. Part one is background on data center energy consumption, which I will be presenting. Part two will focus on IT equipment and will be presented by my colleague, Mike Walker. Part three will focus on opportunities in airflow management and also be presented by my colleague, Mike Walker. Part four will be on HVAC adjustments, which I will be presenting. In part five, Mike Walker is going to talk about free resources and tips for getting started. So let's dive right in and talk about data center energy consumption. So why are we here today? Well, we're here today because data centers use an enormous amount of energy. In fact, Jonathan Kumi, a consulting professor at Stanford, has estimated global data center energy use for a number of years. And he's found that in the US, data center energy use increased by 200% from 2000 to 2005, and by 36% from 2006 to 2010, and that data centers currently use an astounding 2% of the electricity in the United States. However, there's hope. Um, studies have found that data centers can be made far more efficient. In fact, an efficient data center can use up to 80% less power than an inefficient data center. And the upshot of all of this is that data centers represent an enormous opportunity to save energy. I'd also like to mention that these data center energy efficiency opportunities we're talking about are not just limited to the large data centers with endless server racks um, kind of pictured in that, that last slide. There's also an enormous opportunity in the typical commercial building that usually has many small server rooms and closets. In fact, the average commercial office building spends close to a quarter of its annual energy bills on server rooms and closets. And for a highly efficient office building, that number increases to almost half of the building's energy footprint. So what I'm trying to say here is that even though the opportunity is slightly different, uh, in that it may be more focused on IT equipment in the server room and, and server closets, there still is a large opportunity for just about everyone when it comes to data center energy efficiency. So we talked about these savings, but why do these savings remain untapped? Well, there are a number of reasons. And one of the reasons that you're probably pretty familiar with is the split incentive concept. And split incentives arise because data center managers have a capital budget that covers equipment costs and typically do not pay utility bills. So someone in facilities in a completely different part of the organization uh, does that. As a result, the purchase of more energy efficient and usually more expensive IT equipment often only involves an analysis of first costs and not the energy savings that can lead to short-term paybacks. Another huge barrier to energy efficiency in data centers is risk aversion. The IT manager's principal responsibility is system reliability and uptime. In fact, a recent study pegged data center downtime costing a company on average $5,000 per minute. So any initiative whose principal objective is not to enhance reliability and uptime may be regarded as an unnecessary risk. And finally, data center energy efficiency measures involve a special expertise sort of at the cross-section of IT, airflow, and HVAC. So data center and facility managers probably have not received uh, relevant training or education on these issues. So what are we going to do about this? Well, we're going to provide examples of compelling paybacks that will get your IT and facilities teams working together. 
we're going to show you how saving energy actually works hand in hand with reliability and uptime and we're going to explore technical issues to keep a lookout for when starting on energy efficiency measures. So what are the goals of today's presentations? Number one is we're going to identify the primary drivers of data center energy costs. Number two, we're going to provide a non-technical overview of data center efficiency measures. And number three, we want to empower you to spot opportunities in your data center. After this presentation, we want you to be able to walk through your data center or server room and know enough to ask smart questions and perhaps begin a dialogue with your IT colleagues about energy efficiency. And lastly, we want to recommend next steps and helpful and free resources. You may be familiar with the Energy Star label on refrigerators, AC units, and electronics, but actually Energy Star has a long history in the IT space. In fact, the first Energy Star labeled product was a computer monitor. Additionally, Energy Star's low carbon IT team developed the first software tool to centrally manage power consumed by network PCs. In addition, they worked with the Microsoft kernel development team to improve sleep features in Windows Vista and 7. So let's continue with this concept of EPA as an IT energy efficiency advisor. You're all probably familiar with the EPA Energy Star specification for computers and servers, but Energy Star has recently embraced other data center products such as uninterruptible power supplies, data storage, and small network equipment. Um, they're also looking at large networking equipment and data center cooling as well. In addition to that, Energy Star, as part of the Energy Star Buildings program, has developed a rating system for standalone data centers uh, where you can enter about 12 months uh, worth of data and come out of it with a score that ranks you versus hundreds of other data centers uh, across the country. So your standalone data center can now earn Energy Star building designation. And lastly, Energy Star has advised and assisted hundreds of organizations on IT energy efficiency including government entities, schools, small businesses, and dozens of Fortune 500 companies. So let's look at a server rack's energy use from the perspective of a barbecue grill. We recently looked at some data from Industrial Light and Magic, the Hollywood special effects studio that had just upgraded their data center. They were able to deploy 84 blade servers per rack, that figure on your left. Blade servers are these very small form factor um, servers. So with 84 blade servers, just one rack required 28 kilowatts of electricity. And nearly every watt of power consumed is transferred into heat that must be removed from the server rack. So how much cooling do you think this single rack needs to remove that heat produced by the 28 kilowatts it requires about 8 tons of cooling per rack. That is about equivalent to the cooling capacity needed for two McMansions, the single server rack. To put it in other terms, the heat being removed is equivalent to about four Weber Spirit barbecue gas grills depicted there on your right that can cook about 280 burgers per hour. So where does all the energy go? Well let's look at two different data centers. The two pie charts show the energy use breakdown of two large facilities with approximately equivalent data center equipment loads located in adjacent buildings and operated by the same company. The inefficient data center on the left uses multiple distributed cracked DX units. And what you'll notice in that pie chart is that greater than 50% of their overall load is devoted to HVAC. 38% to computer loads, a little bit for lighting, some losses in the UPS. But the majority of the load 
is HVAC. And what that results in is in a PUE, or power usage effectiveness, of 2.6. PUE is a data center efficiency metric, and it's the total data center energy divided by the IT energy. Now let's compare that to the scenario on your right where you're using a completely different HVAC system. There you're using a water-cooled, chilled water plant. You're using a central air handler for air movement. And notice how much smaller the HVAC portion of the load is. It's only about 23%. And it results in a PUE of about 1.6. PUE veers towards 1 as it gets more efficient. So the upshot of all of this is that there are tremendous efficiency gains uh, to be had in a data center um, really focused on how you're cooling uh, those, those IT loads. So that concludes part one of our presentation on data center energy efficiency opportunities. Once again, my name is Bob Wong with the Cadmus Group. My contact information is here on this slide. If you have any further questions, please feel free to contact me. In addition, if you want to learn more about what EPA is doing in the green IT space, um, please go to our website. We're at energystar.gov forward slash low carbon IT.